Hello, my name is Joseph Parker. I work at Sequent as the APAC Senior Technical Team Lead for Geology. I'm gonna run through a neat little workflow on defining drilling intercepts in LeapFrog. Uh, we're gonna generate gram meters, composited lengths, and composited grades as well, which is quite useful for any sort of intercept reporting, or if you just need to know what the average grade over a length of distance is nice and quick. So here's what the end result looks like. We've got a composite that's generated and it's got our length and it's got our average grade and our gram meters. So the way this works in, in practice, once it's set up, you use interval selection to select the intervals you're interested in compositing and assign it to a preset lithology or category and click the save button. Once you click the save button, LeapFrog will process and it'll give you the average uh, grade and length and also the gram meters as well. I've got the label set up to be automatically populating also. To set the workflow up, it's quite simple, actually. All you do is right click on your assay table that contains your assay information, and then you column interval selection. Um, we'll set the base column as none. We want to pre-populate it uh, as being blank, and we'll give it a name like significant intercepts and click OK. I've already done it, so I'll just click cancel. But what that essentially gives you is an extra column in the assay table, and that's where interval selections come from. Now, we're going to flick back to our goal grade. Um, for example, and what we're going to do is use our interval selection tool, just like I showed before, to select an area of interest and assign to. Now, I've already created another lithology called Significant Intercept, but if you hadn't created something yet, then use the Create New Lithology to make one. Clicking on that highlights that area, but until you click the Save button, you won't actually see it populate into the, um, the final output. Um, the next step is to create the actual composite. So in our composites subfolder, right click, new numeric composite and subset of codes. Uh, for this case, we're gonna choose a base column. Now we've assigned, we're assigning our intervals over here. So that's the intervals we wanna use for our compositing. So we choose our significant intercepts that we did, our interval selections. And then we're just gonna max out our length. I'm gonna choose something quite large, like 500. I'm gonna choose something quite low for the minimum coverage percentage of zero, just to ensure that whatever I highlight, it will always create a full composite. Um, you can choose multiple analytes here um, if you like. We're doing gold, so I'll just slide gold across, and I'll give an appropriate name like significant intercept composite. But since I've already created it, I'm not gonna create it again, uh, but click the okay button for me. I'll just click cancel. So now we're pretty much done. We've defined our interval selection column um, in our assay table, which allows us to select the intervals of interest. And those intervals of interest are being used in a numeric composite subset of codes to generate our actual composites or our average grade over that length. The last step we need to do with the composites is to add a couple of bits of information using calculations, and that'll give us our interval length and our linear grade. Now to do that, you just go into your composite and right click and go to calculations. And then we're gonna use the new button at the top to make a new numeric calculation. The answer is going to be a number, so it's a numeric calculation. If the answer was a category or a word, it would be a category calculation, but we're using numeric for now. And then you use the syntax provided. So I've got two different calculations set up. One is interval length, which I've named interval underscore length. And I've just used the uh, metadata here for interval length, and I've just rounded for two decimal places just for neatness. Now for linear grade, I did a similar thing where I just had linear grade multiplied by the AU composited grade, and again, rounded to two decimal places. Once you have those calculations set up, click on the save button, and then you'll notice that in your composites, you now have a uh, calculations field that's expandable and it's got those two intervals there um, that you can visualize on or you can use in our labels. So the last step is simply to highlight your composite, go across to format display text to actually create our label. Um, for me, I've just gone and free typed in just some words and characters that make up my label and using the insert column, you can insert the different uh, parameters that you need um, from the information that is, is in your um, assay interval table, your composite interval table, I should say. Um, and that's pretty much it. So hopefully that workflow was useful for you. Um, if you have any questions or have any difficulties with it, please feel free to reach out to us at support at sequent.com. Thank you so much for your attention. Enjoy your day.